Cars, guitars, burnouts, and memorabilia. Welcome to ClassicMuscleCars.com, the show that features top quality muscle cars from the 50s through the 70s and everything in between, including the coolest rock and roll collectibles you'll find in one place. So buckle up and check it out. The most ground-pounding, earth-chattering rock and roll machines around right here on ClassicMuscleCars.com with your hosts, Tony Begley and Jeremy Marks. There isn't a day that goes by that I live that I don't learn something about the cars that I love from the 60s and 70s and going even back to the 50s. Now, I love the look of this car. I just love the way this body is shaped. You got a little bit of a whale tail coming up here. I'm not a sports car enthusiast, but I like to drive these cars. One of my favorite cars that I like to drive of all time was the 69 Z28, and that car was set up because those cars handled so well. They did a lot of the Trans Am racing in 1969, and I really enjoyed taking those cars around the corner, doing 60, downshifting, coming out around the turn, sliding the back in around. I love doing stuff like that. I love going to the drag strip. I'm an ex-drag racer, but I tell you, there's something to be said about enjoying a fast car, taking it around a corner as fast as you can. What these cars were, it was a kit that was designed in the 60s, and the company was called Fab. Fiber Fab. Now, when you look at these cars, you look at the look on this car, and for something that was made in the 60s, it's pretty darn cool. We had a lot of great cars from the 60s, GT40, Cobra, some really cool cars. I love the way that this car sweeps and flows. Now, when this company started in the 60s, they were building this car, and this one is called the GT12 Avenger. There are some different versions that they had of these. Now, we're going to sell three of these cars in a package. One is the center section, which Jeremy's going to run the camera over there. This is a GT15 center section. It has a tilt front end, tilt back end. The car didn't have an engine in the front. They were in the back. Now this particular car that I'm standing next to, this one is built on a Volkswagen chassis. has Volkswagen drivetrain in it. Um, one thing that's unique about these cars from the kit, the front windshield was out of a Corvair. The back window out of a 65 Mustang Fastback. So the body shell that I'm going to have Jeremy bring the camera over and show you, we also have the back windshield for this. Now the doors are on this one. Uh, this one even has the wiring. Jeremy will go around and show you that. It's been wired already. Um, one thing that's pretty cool, the gas cap is right off of a chart. Flip top, Mopar. It's cool. You can do a lot of cool stuff with these cars. Now, um, the company was around in the 60s and 70s. They sold quite a few of these kit cars. They were very popular. Now, what happened after that was they went out of business. They got rebought. They're still under the same name. They manufacture the cars today, but they manufacture the Valkyrie, which is basically almost a mid-engine car because the engine is put in those right behind the front seats. Now, we're going to move from here. We're going to go over and we're going to show you another GT15, and that one has got the flip, flip fold in front end, and also that one's got the flip folding back end that flips back and that one is a 300 horse V6 and I'm telling you that car will run like you would not believe that's a car you can get in it's quick it's fast it handles really good because of the way that car was built that car also has a tube chassis so we're gonna move from here we're gonna go down and we're gonna show you the other GT15 Avenger now this is the other car that we were telling you about when we were showing you the uh, the Avenger the GT12 the yellow car. This one is orange. Now a couple things here. This car was in storage for a lot of years and if you look at the headlights here there should be clear uh, plexiglass lens over here for a cover and we don't have those. So just letting you know what, what we're missing here. We've got a, a window that's in here that goes into the driver's side that's not in the car so you're gonna have to do a little bit of playing with these cars. These cars the two are running driving cars, but they were in storage for a long time. Now this one is kind of neat because when you look at it at the back, it's got a little bit different back end on it. And this is a tilt back back end. This is a 300 horse. 
V6 that's in this car. It's got a uh, disc brake setup and suspension, front suspension from a Carmagia and transaxle on the back Carmagia. So um, this car will flat out fly. It's unbelievable. And it's pretty cool when you are driving it because you feel like you're actually in a really fast sports car, man. It's got that sleek look. And you know what? I guarantee, I don't care where you go to cruise this car, people are going to flock all over because the people that we've had to come in here is like, wow, check this thing out. It's cool. You never see them. Now remember, this is a vintage body. This was built back in the 60s. Um, these are really uh, way ahead of their time design when you think that, okay, this car was built in the 60s and, and 70s. That's a long time ago. This car looks what we call forever young. Forever young means that no matter how old it is, it still looks like a car of today's era. It's timeless. That's what this car is all about. So now, you give Randy a call at 847-526-5950. He can go through the information we have. We also have uh, the book that came from the manufacturer originally, from back in the day. So it's pretty cool. We've got a lot of information. We've got a lot of parts, uh, uh, books, and, and things that you would need if you're going to have uh, this car to service it and what you need to do and the idios idiosyncrasies that it may have. Now Jeremy's going to come around this car, he's going to show you the back. It's really got a wild looking back end. It's, it's really a cool looking car. Now uh, before I let you go here, I got to show you a photograph and uh, this photograph goes out to my buddy Richard out in LA. This is pretty cool. Now we're going to say, hey, what, what is this? What is this, right? Uh, most of you out there. Well, Richard and I have been uh, exchanging uh, uh, information on Mustangs, which is one of my favorite subjects here since we have sitting in the showroom, the first one that rolled off the assembly line. Uh, this is pretty cool. This is actually a photograph taken of 140, number 140, pre-production hand-built Mustang that was built at Allen Park in uh, Detroit. Uh, it was when they first started building the pre-production Mustangs. When we took this car apart, lo and behold, what do we find? What is that, Jeremy? That's the back of the instrument panel, and it's numbered using the band-aid tape that was available back then with a laundry marker so that you wouldn't mess up putting the lights and wires back on. Yeah, now can you actually believe that this car was sold to a retail buyer? <laughs> I mean, I just, you know... Can you imagine that, buying a car, pulling it apart, and finding that? It's like, who in the hell did that to start with? Well, that's some pretty cool stuff, but we have a lot of those photographs. We have a lot of documentation. We did a lot of research. Uh, we pulled these cars apart, and we knew that. And I just wanted to show that to my buddy Richard, uh, who's been working with me on documenting a lot of the early Mustangs. So give Randy a call on these cars. We want to uh, sell them as a package. We're not going to split them up, and I'm going to tell you something. This is a fantastic bargain, a great price. So give us a call here at 847-526-5950. And remember, what do we always say, Jeremy? You got to keep cruising. Keep cruising. Oh. <laughs> yeah, folks, I want to let you know something here, too. Uh, we have a good, dear friend of ours that passed away last week. His name is Palmer Lazarus. Now, we want to tell you a little bit about it. Jeremy is working on a memorial that we're doing for him in film. Uh, to memorialize his life. Now, he was one of the original founding fathers of drag racing. Now, you're um, going to remember some of these names that I'm going to call off. Andy, Andy Granditelli, A.J. Foy, Arnie the Farmer Beswick. These are some of the famous ex-racers that Palmer Lazarus raced with back in the day in the 50s. Palmer was a World War II uh, pilot and he was, after he got mustered out back uh, during the war, when the war was over, he came out here in the area where we live here now in Wakanda, and he started racing at an old abandoned airstrip that was out here in Half Day, Illinois, which is now Lincolnshire. There is no more Half Day. Half Day got its name because back in the stagecoach days, when you left Chicago, you were going to Milwaukee, it took a half day to get from Chicago to Half Day. So that's how Half Day got its name. The um, abandoned airstrip was from the Glenview Naval Air Base. That airstrip became uh, to them useless, so some of the people started going out there 
and Palmer is one of the people that was instrumental and they started racing on it. So that's how we got started in drag racing. Not just him, there was a movement that was out in California, but Palmer was instrumental in getting this going out here on this abandoned airstrip. Uh, we have some vintage film that you're going to see, and we're going to keep watching on our internet site. We're going to put that up of Palmer when he actually raced out there on Super 8 camera, right, Jeremy? It was 8 millimeter. And uh, it's pretty clear. It's really cool stuff. Everybody that's been around here in this area who's raced, for example, that's been to Union Grove here that's in Wisconsin, everybody knows Palmer. Now, let me tell you, the man was 85 years old when he died. He used to come here up until last year driving his car open headers right in their parking lot and that's what it was all about okay he used to also he, he used to also go uh, when he when he raced his car up until about two years ago he would drive his car up to Great Lakes he would jack it up take the tires off that he drove up on put his slicks on uncork the headers pull the plugs out change the plugs rejet the carburetor run the car down the track a couple of times put it all back together and drive it home. That was the kind of guy I was. So that is somebody who has a real heart for racing. And his heart and soul and everything that he was about was about his need for speed. So you know what? For all of us gearheads out there, the longer that you remain active in the sport of drag racing, the longer the lifespan you possibly could have because you know that's what it's all about is that excitement that you get when you push the pedal down and you get to pedal to the metal so watch for this film that's coming up that Jeremy's putting together and uh, it's a fantastic interview that I did with Palmer and it's probably one of the only ones that was ever done because he was one of those guys he didn't brag about himself and a lot of people never knew this about him and he will he tells you in this interview when he raced Andy Grandatelli, and it's really cool, man. So this is awesome. It's something you really want to see. It's a part of Americana and a part of history of drag racing. So be watching on ClassicMuscleCars.com. Yeah, we sure are going to miss Palmer. He was always a character. He actually stopped in here um, probably about a month ago, right, uh, right before Christmas time, uh, a little after Thanksgiving, right before Christmas. He was here. Nice guy. Super nice guy. Anyway, let's get back to the uh, cars here. Right now we're looking at the uh, yellow ch chassis with the uh, tube frame, as well as the uh, half body here. Um, that needs a little more work. Gotta love the uh, charger gas door there. And there's the uh, wiring harness that takes that. A friend of mine and I always wanted to put one of these together right after high school. Took the body off the Volkswagen. Never really got around to finishing it though. Now we got them just about already done. Hmm. The documentation, by the way, there's an incredible amount of documentation, which uh, I've got a separate little video on that you can look at. Um, there should be a link for it in the uh, main body of the page. And that's got not only just the stuff from the factory, but it's got magazine articles. It's got handwritten notes that whoever the person was that had this uh, made to uh, detail the uh, wiring harness information and uh, little, you know, little hints and things. It's just notes as, he, as the person was going along putting it together. Uh, he, all that stuff is included there. It's, it's got detailed wiring diagrams for the uh, different parts, uh, sources to get stuff. So uh, the documentation is great. Here now we're looking at the uh, orange body car, and uh, this too is very cool. For 60s, uh, for 60s work, this stuff looks great. Yeah, these have to be fast little cars too. They were fun. Nicely done. Not much left to be done. The interiors are looking actually quite good. And now let's take a look at the back end of this here. Now the 
of a rocket ship kind of back in there. Nice lines. Quick look on the inside here. Very cool. Give Randy a call, 847-526-59. MuscleCars.com is a NICAB production. For more information about the show and our business, log on to our website at www.classicmusclecars.com.